26.2 miles. That's a marathon. If I said to everyone in the audience right now, let's put our bags away and let's go do a marathon, how many people do you think would sign up? Not very many, right? Hands up in the audience if you have done a marathon or something similar where you've pushed your body to the limit or thought about doing a marathon of uh, pushing your body to the limit. What you will know, all of us will know, is this is an emotional experience. I've had friends of mine who've done marathons. At the end of the race, they're crying their eyes out, and I'm like, what, what's the matter? You're not happy it's done? They're like, no, Mark, you need to understand, six miles back, my body shut down, and it's a mental run to the very end. Does people who've done a marathon agree with that statement? Yeah, exactly. My wife comes to me one day and she says, hey, I'm going to do a marathon. I'm like, 26.2 miles? She's like, yep. I'm like, that's fantastic. Now, she's a fitness instructor. She does spin class uh, two or three times a week. That's where you get on the bike and you, you're, you know, you're running or you're riding up hills and stuff like that. She actually trains uh, uh, bikers in uh, uh, cyclists in Canada, because quite often we have snow on the ground and you can't train all year, so you go to spin classes to train for them. She also teaches bar. Don't ask me what that is during the question period. I have no idea. I think it's something aerobic, by the way. So anyways, she makes this decision. She does the training. She signs up for it. It's called Seek to Peak. It's in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. It starts at the ocean. And it pretty much goes straight uphill for about three or four miles. It goes in and out the roads and then comes out to the base of Grouse Mountain. That's a mountain that I live very close by to. And then there's a hike all the way up for probably climbing like five Empire State Buildings. It's got a lot of steps on it. It's called the Grouse Grind. It's actually quite a famous hike. Um, lots of steps, not a lot of passing, pretty complicated. You can't go down it. And then there's this probably a mile or so at the very top. So she signs up for this. Everything is great. She's done her training. She's got some coaching. She's eat right, right. Everything is good. Day of the race, she starts. My son and I, he's 10 years old. We're all excited at the end, waiting for my wife to show up at 3.45 when she said she was going to be done. 3.45 comes. The friends and family are there with signs. Wee! No wife at 3.45. 350, no wife. My son's like pulling on me. Yes, son? Where, where's mom? In, inside at that point in time, talking about emotion because it's emotional for the runner and also for the spectator and the supporter, I was like, oh no, what's happened? I know it's a tricky uh, run. I know that she's, if she's got in danger or in trouble somewhere on the grind, which is a hike, that's pretty like dangerous, I'm worried about that. Hopefully if something's happened, it's happened at the top or maybe down the bottom. 10 more minutes go by, son leans over and says, hey, dad, yeah, what, 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 what? Can I, can I get a hot chocolate? I'm like, it's July, your mom's not over the line yet, we're waiting for her. I don't know where to get a hot chocolate, I think there's a hut over there or something like that. Anyways, all in the end, good news, my wife came across, she just got a little backed up, on the trail and the grouse grind, so everything was good, right? Great. Where's the little tab thing? Fast forward a few years, TCS has sponsored over 45 events worldwide called the Break the Tape. 12 of those are marathons, and they have talked to the race organization, uh, organizers and they've said to them, look, We'd like to refine the runner experience. We want to make the runner experience better. We've got people who run marathons at TCS. We've got people who participate and volunteer. Because as uh, some of the people have put their hands up, people who are running the marathon, some of them are doing it for charity. Some of them are doing it for their personal use. Some of them are doing it for competition. There's different reasons why people are running marathons. We want to increase the optimal output of the experience of all of those runners. So they talked to them, shared the experiences, We've got runners now with technology that can run virtually, so you can run on a treadmill, you can use VAR if you want. So you've got people around the world running the London Marathon. They're not even in London, right? You've got people around the world now being able to watch those people running who are not in London and also physical. So it was all about improving the experience. And TCS built an app to do that. 
but how did they get here? Okay, we're primarily talking about tracking and geolocation capabilities today. How they got here is they first did the interviews with the race organizers. They're like, okay, so right off the bat, whether we're a new marathon or an old marathon, we have a route. We've got to lay it out. We've got to start. We've got to finish. Uh, we've got points in the map that we want to be able to have spectators watch. We've got points in the map that we want to be able to hand them water as they're going by or any necessities in order to finish the race. We have to have them register. We can't have people register that have done it 50 times and have them start at the same time. You don't want me at the very front of the marathon and you've got really fast runners behind that are trying to deke out and figure out how to get past. So you've got certificates to think about in the aspects of this person's doing it the first time, this person's doing it the 50th time, and they're competitive, so they're starting a little bit earlier or a little bit you know, sooner in the race. Um, you've got some coaching that you want to do. There's a tire that you have to wear. So as people who have run the marathon or thought about running a marathon, you can't say that wear the same shoes you would run a mile to run 26 miles. You need the right kit. You need the right jerseys on, etc. You got to collect your bibs. Um, there's specific nutrition during the race. So some runners maybe want water. Some want bananas and water, etc. And then of course we've got the results. So you've got the times, A, I'm going through 0.5 mile, I want to know I'm at X time and that and keeping pace. And then you've got the photos at the end, you've got health checks, because we want to make sure this, the runners are safe, etc. Specifically talking about the runners, we've got runners who are using 3D maps or augmented reality to train for the London Marathon, as an example, who could train in San Francisco on their treadmill, know what the track is, so that when they get there to London, they can actually run the race knowing exactly what it's looked like, or have a screen down on their um, treadmill device. Obviously, the runner, my wife, as an example, she is probably gonna wanna share the information with me. She wants her friends and family to be able to see who and where she is on the race and how she's doing time-wise. Um, of course, she wants to share that information so that she can talk about what cause she's running for, so when friends and family are log in or people want to log in and see, possibly tied to donations, etc. Talking about the supporters, wouldn't it have been a lot better for me if I was at the very top of the mountain waiting for my wife? I could have just taken out my phone and gone, oh, you know what, Malcolm? She's, she's 10 minutes away. She's 10 minutes away. And then when my son asked for a hot chocolate, I'd be like, Oh, yeah, you know what? Hold on, points of interest around here. You know what? There's a hot chocolate place just over the hill. I'm going to go to the hot chocolate place. You want to stay here with family and friends, Dee and, Dee and Kathy, and then I'll go get your hot chocolate. That is optimizing the experience of the runner. That is optimizing the experience of the supporter. Regarding spectators or, and supporters as well, it's also about being able to identify when my wife is starting. So if she's finishing at 345, Probably one of the big reasons she didn't get to that destination on that time was because she started a bit late. So if I can see when she starts, then I know that I can go get something to eat, see points of interest. And in London, with so many sites to see, wouldn't it be great if you're there with friends and family and you can go to your favorite pub or you can go to your favorite art gallery or whatever you want to do before the race or during the race at any point of time and then look for specific areas on the map of points of interest to take good photos. All of this happens with choosing the right architecture and right technologies, though. The business side of it, the aspects of what delivery you're giving to the, the personal people on the ground, that's one thing, but you have to build the right architecture. You have to use the right technologies. And when Emit comes up here in five to uh, six minutes, he will go deeper into what it is that we used in order to accomplish that. I'm going to cover off some of the high-level stuff to start. Well, it's obvious, if we're going to be able to see someone on a map, we need map capabilities, right? So we need geo -map, uh, spatial map tiles. We need to be able to add points of interest so that if there's specific areas the London Marathon wants to promote uh, or tell people to be able to take photos, we will be able to promote those areas. We need geocoding and reverse geocoding and understanding the longitude and the latitude of where the runners are, just like tracking a vehicle that's coming to pick you up. We want to know where they are associated to how they're coming close to you. And of course, we need routes on a map. 
sure, we're doing London Marathon and other uh, marathons, but at the same time, what about the more complicated races we want to expand into? Remember when I said my wife started on the road and she went into the forest? Well, there may be runs that go into the forest and there's trails. Me as a runner, I want to be able to know that I've gone off track, if I've gone off track, if it's a more complicated run. And my family who's watching, or friends who are watching, also want to know that I've gone off track, right? As does the race organization. So we need tracking. We also need geofencing in the aspects of the times you're handing out water or any events getting close to the end. I could have gotten an alert, an SMS alert, saying, hey, uh, my wife, Velda, is only five minutes away. Good, that's good. We can get the, the signs out, ready to go, because we know she's coming, right? And what would be the worst thing that happens with my wife and my relationship if I'm off getting hot chocolate when she crossed that line? I can guarantee you, to this day, I would be hearing it every morning. Do you remember when you weren't there for me? Yes, I remember I wasn't there. That's why I couldn't go get my son a hot chocolate. Now, I'm going to step aside for a second here, and I'm going to, I'm going to still continue to focus on the, the London Marathon and the capabilities of Amazon Location Service, but I want to talk a little bit outside of that so you get clarity on the aspects of Amazon Location Service isn't just offering functionality to the London Marathon. There's also features and functionality outside of that related to targeting transportation logistics, etc. So right off the bat, we have nine map styles. Satellite imagery is one of them. Truck-focused maps. So if someone's delivering uh, packages around Europe, around the world, and they want to avoid um, you know, tolls, or they want to avoid specific bridges, uh, or there's a weight restriction on rows, you want a truck-specific map related to them. Okay? And of course, there's other map styles for other reasons. We need the places and the aspects of the places API. So remember when I said about those points of interest, that hot chocolate place that was over there, or the art gallery, might be a church, might be something that uh, you want points of interest specifically to make sure they're on the map. Then the places API will allow you to do that, and it offers autocomplete as well. We've got trackers, of course, at the end of the day. How are we tracking the London Marathon runners? We need to be able to track those assets, and we use that with the mobile devices today. Three weeks ago, Amazon Location released IoT Core, so now we'll be able to put IoT devices in the bibs and track them that way. Shouldn't have done that, that's bad. We'll do that again, promise, knocking. Um, so we've got the IoT devices that can go on the bibs. And then last but not least, we have the geofences. Think about the personal experience of the runners and the water, right? We've got our water on our station, Hand over, three, two, five, seven, six is coming. Sally's coming, she needs water and banana. Water and a banana. Here we go, Sally, come on, good job. What if we put her face and her name on the screen and she got cheer cards from all of the people that are friends and family? When you're doing a marathon, you need those types of things to motivate you to keep going, especially if you get to that last six miles when it's personal and it's mental and you're thinking about all the things that you are doing to run this marathon, if you're a first-time runner or 50-time runner. That's called personalization. And Geofences offers that capability. In a bigger picture way, we could send geomarketing campaigns to her at the time, but she'd probably, or the per Sally would be upset at that. She doesn't want to know if she can get a deal in the shoes in the store that's close by. She's running a marathon right now. But my point is, is the geofencing will help with that. Amazon Location Service is easy to integrate because of our SDKs, our APIs, the technologies that we built around it, but the primary reason why it's easy to implement is because we have accelerated development because of all our other, other integrations and the other AWS services. Amplify, AmSync, EventBridge, when we're talking about geofences, your, your SMN, SMF alerts come from event, EventBridge, IoT Core, et cetera. Now, at the marathon, and I'm gonna talk about this more, security, performance, latency, all of these things are really important too. My wife doesn't want her data to be exposed to the world and monetized. I don't want my data to be exposed and monetized by the world. It's your data, you keep it. We have two data providers that are map providers that we use today, Esri and here. They don't even know who's using the service because it's your data, not theirs and not ours, right? Now talking about data providers, Data providers are an important part of this because when we talk about Marathon, there are different data providers that are better use cases or usage in different territories. So for instance, if we want to run a marathon in Santiago, Chile, 
There's a different data provider as we are here, or the two that we offer today, but later on in, in, in the future, we'll have other data providers that will be more map specific to that area. Now, Amit's coming up, and he's gonna talk a little bit about uh, the deep dive and the aspects of the process they went from. Welcome Amit from TCS. Yes, we are there from the start line to the finish line at London Marathon and today here at reInvent. We are there for our customers across multiple industry verticals, present in 131 countries, leading on innovation for over 50 years. We at TCS are building on belief a great future for enterprises and communities. Thank you, Mark, for a great introduction of uh, London Marathon and overview of Amazon Location Service, and a very emotional story of your wife's run. Hi, everyone. My name is Amit Kumar, and I'm part of AWS Business Unit in TCS. And today, I'll talk you, I'll take you through the journey of London Marathon app, the technical details, the architecture, some of the business, some of the problems that it solves, and some numbers around it. Imagine you are building a marathon app. What are some of the features up front you would like to have? You'd like to have functionality to import map tiles. What are map tiles? Map tiles essentially are maps which are rendered on your browser or your devices. They render maps by combining dozens of maps or vector images which are fetched independently. And map tile is also one of the most efficient way to render maps as compared to some of the older technologies. Map tiles have three different components, main components. First two are the coordinates, the latitude and the longitude. The third one is the zoom level. So depending on the latitude and longitude and the zoom level, you fetch different map tiles. Why do you need that? You might want to zoom on onto a particular runner to track the exact location. You might want to zoom out to get a larger view of your marathon route. And that is where map tile comes into handy. Points of interest. I have been running Mumbai Marathon. Mumbai is in India, and Mumbai Marathon is one of the largest marathon uh, in India. I have been running Mumbai Marathon since 2017. And a few years back, one of my friends who's, who's in Navy, he was interested in running Mumbai Marathon. And just a few days before the marathon started, he was, getting a curious, he was getting curious about a place called Pedar Road. It's a, it's a place in Mumbai. The reason he was curious because Pedar Road 
is rather famous or infamous for its steep climb. And those who are runners here can understand runners would normally pace their run differently on an incline or a decline. They have this different strategies around it. So runners, even before the run, they need to understand or know the points of interest on a marathon course. Points of interest can be places, can be uh, drink station, can be first aid stations, can be toilets around the course. And you need to have this information before the run to plan your run, and of course during the run. Geocoding the runners based on time and speed. If Mark had that uh, feature, Mark could locate his wife. Those uh, moments, I'm sure, would have been less anxious. So you want to track your run, not only track your runner, but as a runner, myself, I would like to, I, I started, a, imagine a scenario, I started a run with my friend and maybe uh, somewhere down the way, uh, we are both ahead or behind of each other. I would want to track on the app how far I'm, am I ahead or how far am I behind, right? And displaying the marathon route, of course, is one of the essential features that you would want to have in an app. Amazon Location Service not only provides all these features out of box, but makes it very easy for your application developers to integrate these features on your app through pre-built SDKs for iOS, Android, and JavaScript. And the API calls to getting map tiles, some of the other features, makes it very efficient for developers to integrate it into your app. Moving on to the architecture, how we built and deployed the architecture. Some of the things which you will notice here is that all the services are AWS native services. That was a deliberate choice we made so that integration, security, monitoring, logging, auditing, all this becomes easy and, and we don't need unnecessarily complexity around it. The applications are, the app is in Android and iOS, and the static content is stored in S3, which is distributed through CloudFront. And the CloudFront endpoint is protected by AWS WAF to protect it against uh, malicious attacks and bots. The user requests are routed to ALB, which routes the request to the application layer, which is a bunch of EC2 servers placed in an auto-scaling group. And depending on what kind of API call you are making, your requests are routed to Amazon Location Service or the RDS. Say, for example, as a supporter, one of the user persona, Mark was talking about a supporter. As a supporter, I want to track the geocode location of a runner. The API calls would be routed to application layer, and that request would go to the Amazon location service. Based on the speed of the runner, speed and the distance which has covered, the location service will respond with the geolocation code of a runner, which will be then displayed onto uh, the app. A runner might want to look at the statistics of his run after the run is completed. That's where we have our data persistence layer. The data is, uh, it's a uh, Amazon RDS uh, Postgres. And after a few intervals, after every five kilometers, the details, the speed, the timing, the split details of runners are persisted into Amazon RDS. We also, for efficient rendering and 
good performance, we are also caching the map tiles at regular intervals. So simple yet very effective architecture. And we have integrations with other applications, training partners, and social media app, which is made available. You can share your run details over there. In our journey to building this super app, we ensured that we are well aligned to AWS well-architected framework. All through, we have uh, leveraged AWS uh, cloud formation templates following the infrastructure as a code philosophy. You would agree that Marathon app, by the nature of it, would be seasonal in nature. Throughout the year, the usage would be low, and during the run season or around it, the usage peaks up. So essentially, when developers need to spin up a new environment to add new features, which we are regularly doing, if you compare the features of 2021 app with 2022, there are a bunch of new features which have come in. Developers can spin up the entire environment, do their development, enhancement testing, and then again tear down the environment. So this is only made possible through cloud formation. Belief Booster. Belief Booster is one of the features which was released in London Marathon 2022 app. And that's just one example of a new feature which was, what it does is that your supporters can post a motivating message for you and those will be displayed at certain intervals or near finishing line. And Belief Booster had more than 150,000 messages during the current London Marathon. And this is made possible because we have kept the modular design. We are developing the applications in the, using microservices style of architecture, and the components are modular in nature. CloudWatch and CloudTrail are being leveraged for uh, monitoring and uh, logging. Talked about the code being uh, the WAF, uh, cloud trail being protected by WAF, and the data in REST or in transit are all encrypted. Again, there we are using Amazon KMS, Key Management Service, and uh, ACM, Certificate Manager, to keep the data encrypted. Wherever possible, we have utilized managed service so that we don't have issues around uh, reliability. The application is deployed across three availability zones. We also have segregated user groups into different category to avoid single point of failure. We have a different routes for runners doing a virtual run through the app. We have a separate uh, routing path for uh, supporters and runners, so that there is uh, no single point of failure. Performance, couple of points. I, I mentioned that static content, although it resides in S3, it's distributed through uh, CloudFront and caching of uh, map tiles. Performance becomes really important in uh, applications like these, which needs to scale maybe thousands of times during one particular day as compared to the average usage over the rest of a year. And that is where our close partnership and collaboration with AWS team comes into play. Before the rest day, we jointly work with AWS support team so that scaling is achieved in absolutely right and desired way. You must have noticed we have used a all the native services of AWS, no third party product, no unnecessary license cost. And by using serverless and other things, we are also contributing towards sustainability. This entire architecture is supported by state of our DevOps pipeline, orchestrated by AWS code pipeline and code commit is used as a version control tool. 
Not only that, we also take regular backups. So when developer commits the code, the CloudWatch event is triggered, and using code build, the snapshot of code commit is automatically taken as a backup into version controlled S3 bucket. Resources are encrypted and placed within VPC. We are monitoring VPC logs for any malicious activities. Application layer which resides on EC2 is protected through security groups. And the cloud trail is enabled in all of the reasons. Buckets are encrypted and uh, version controlled. And we go, definitely go by the principle of least privilege through IAM in all the aspects. What are some of the values which we have delivered, some of the numbers? Before I go into this, let me give you some numbers. 2021, this application was downloaded, this app was downloaded close to 400,000 times. And if I'm not wrong, this year it has been downloaded by 500,000 times. Mark talked about we use this app during pandemic to organize a virtual run. During that virtual run, people could complete their run from anywhere across the world over a period of 24 hours. And that run gathered a total participation of 38,000 participants, which in itself is a Guinness Book of World Record, makes it marks. And that was made possible through this app. What we saw that the productivity improvement in developer for some of the best practices, we adopted some of the features which Amazon location service provided. The productivity improvement went up close to 20% because of the SDKs to the DevOps pipeline and the monitoring alerting services which we configured. Ease of use, the reduced touch point for handling map tile, that went up by 30%. And we had feedback from the earlier versions of app that when users zoom in, the view of a map was hazy. It was not clear as it is in, after we switched to Amazon location services. We saw customer friendliness or user satisfaction go up by 25%. Amazon location service is a pay-as-a-go service. You are not required to pay any upfront cost when you start utilizing this service. So as compared to the earlier providers, we were able to achieve 33% cost optimization to be moved here. Ledingo Lopet, anyone here familiar with? Okay. Ledingo Lopet is one of the famous cross-country run organized in Ledingo in Sweden. And it's one of the most famous cross-country run. This year, around 23,000 runners completed their run there. And by Organizing body, it was assigned a title of World Heritage Plaque to this run. We have a demo of uh, some of the features of this app which was used for this run. So you can see, you can search the runners by their names or by bib number. You can track their miles, their uh, splits, you can zoom on to a particular runner or a couple of runners. And here we see DL is approaching a 2K mark. And I want to maybe zoom out and you know check on to another runner which I am interested in. And all this is from the real app. You can see the clarity 
and the functionality and the performance. Absolutely clear. So where do we go from here? A lot of areas we have in mind, we have identified where we are planning to work. We plan to have live streaming cheer videos of your supporters. So that on this app, when you are approaching a particular milestone, those live streaming videos of your supporters or spectators are, can be streamed to you. We want to make training much more enhanced with features like augmented reality so that you can see the actual trail even though you are not physically present and prepare according to that. We want to integrate uh, IoT-based sensors into this app so that when you cross certain points which, are, which can ingest IoT data that can be fed or your data from your smart devices can be fed onto this app. Real-time tracking and automated health analysis while you are on your run, what monitoring your vital statistics related to the health. This can be as a collaboration platform for runners where runners can interact with other fellow runners and it can be like a community. So that is where we have it planned. We also plan to have a customized training and a monitoring plan. Most of the marathons, if you see across the world, you start your marathon from a different place and you end at a different uh, place, right? And normally, when you come to your starting point, you come in a different attire, get into your running attire, and then start your, you put the rest of your uh, things in a luggage store and a baggage, and normally the truck tows it away to the finishing point. More often than not, it's a, quite a task for runners to get their baggage at the finish line. That's where we, again, have art working to make it more easy for runners to track their baggage. So London Marathon is just one way we at TCS are using technology to make lives better, to promote healthy lifestyle, to reduce spend on healthcare for countries and by organizations. I'd like to invite Mark to sum it up. Thank you. Thanks, Amit. So, Going all the way back, working backwards, it starts with TCS being involved in sponsoring marathons around the world related to breaking the tape. It started with trying to improve the runner's experience. As we mentioned, it's an emotional event. Lots of people are running for different reasons, first-time runners, second-time runners, 50-time runners, etc., all running for different experiences. And when we bring all this together, TCS has to make sure that when all of those people come together on the Sunday of the race, that they're downloading upwards of 400 or 500,000 app downloads, that the experience around the event has no problems with latency, for me personally, has no issues related to security or using my data for monetizing information needs to be done in a well-architected framework, so those performance regarding if I'm watching my runner go, I don't want them blipping all over the map. I also don't want to have issues with the app. It's all about the experience. Remember Sally, who's coming around the corner, she's running for whatever reason. Remember someone personalizing the experience, and Amit mentioned putting up on the screens the belief chance. That's what it's about. It's about optimizing that experience. TCS had to make responsible choices around the technology that they use in order to make sure that experience was at an optimal level, and that's what they did. At a foundational piece, 
Amazon Location Service was one of those pieces, as well as a number of other core technologies within AWS. I am Mark Williams. I am the go-to-market specialist for Amazon Location Service. I would like to invite Amit Kumar back on stage, global head for TCS, for uh, modern application development and DevOps. And uh, just in case you have some additional deep dive technical questions, I wanted to bring Zach, who helped us out with the development of this presentation as well, to answer some deeper technical questions if you have any related to the Amazon Location Service. He is a solutions architect for Amazon Location Service. Any questions? Floor is now open. And we have 19 minutes. Let's use it up. Yeah.